Hello, and thank you for listening to the Founders Corner podcast, hosted by AJ Prasad. Join AJ as he sits down with business owners from around the world to discuss their business struggles. As an entrepreneur and proud owner of many seven-figure web-based businesses, AJ has dedicated himself to helping businesses of all shapes and sizes grow. If you would like to reach out to AJ, fill out the form on our site. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the Founders Corner podcast. Uh, this is AJ and with me I have Zondra Wilson, Blue Skin Care LLC. Blue manufactures and distributes US, USDA certified organic skincare products. Yeah. How are you today, Zondra? I'm doing well. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> so first, uh, let's learn some more about your business and its successes until today. Sure. Sure, sure. Uh, Blue Skin Care was um, started back in February of 2015. And basically, um, it's been like a, a work in progress over, I would say, the past 20 years. My mom and my aunt would always used, would use, um, you know, products from the farm, organic stuff on their face because back in the um, 50s and 60s, they couldn't afford like the higher end skincare products. So mm-hmm. they would tell me all about this, you know, like olive oil, coconut oil, but you know, I was too bougie to use any of that stuff. I called it like kitchen stuff. So <laughs> I would go and buy like the Clinique and the the Kiel and the higher end products for my face. Mm-hmm. What happened, an incident happened where I couldn't afford those products anymore. I went through a, um, I had a, a little financial situation mm-hmm. that happened, so I ended up using some of the recipes and some of the products, the ingredients that they had recommended. And oh my gosh, I, I wasn't expecting the results. I wasn't expecting, um, I guess the kind of um, what it did for my skin. Mm-hmm. I knew what it did for their skin. You know, you have this thing in the inner city that they, well, actually, it's, you know, uh, you know, with dealing with um, the more melanin in your skin, you know, you don't get as many wrinkles and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. So anyway, after I watched and looked and, you know, saw for myself, I, you know, I, I never went back. <laughs> okay. That's, that's fantastic. So, uh, so now uh, when you are, when you do like USDA certified so so did you now did you create your own uh, formula yes usda basically there are only about nine of us in the country believe it or not you have a lot of organic skincare com- uh, skincare lines uh-huh. um, but not usda bottom line with usda is that they need to be edible which is very hard to get past because most skincare products um, contain ingredients that you can't necessarily eat. Correct. And one of the things that um, I've always been taught and I believe in is that if you're putting it on your skin, it should be something you should be able to eat because anything that goes on your skin um, ultimately seeps into your bloodstream, into your body. So these recipes and these ingredients were things that, like I said, my, my mom used from way back. And then I just started using them. I went to like the Whole Foods stores, their local farmers here, because you want the absolute pr- purest products that was Mm -hmm. the key not just oatmeal but you want the the um pure non-gmo um oatmeal things that have that's made with um little to no type of preservatives and so that's the key with blue skincare is not just uh we we just have products but it's the type of products and it's really good for people who have rosacea psoriasis eczema Mm. any skin condition if you have an illness some people that are fighting um, cancer or pregnancies and things of that nature like to use our products because there's nothing in it it's just pure Uh Mm -hmm. so uh, so then uh, uh, because it is your own blend so Mm -hmm. have you uh, filed for any kind of patent for example so that you are protected oh no I don't have because with skincare it's all the same anyway Um, the only difference are the um, the type of ingredients that I use. And of course, with, with um, some of the packaging, you don't have to release every ingredient, but it's stuff that you, you, it, it's no secret, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Huh. So um, it's just a matter of the formulations, but uh, unless you have chemicals and stuff like that, which is something that a lot of the skincare companies that come up with, Mm-hmm. They patent those type of things, but when it's all natural skincare stuff, you can't patent because it's all natural. It's like I can't patent oatmeal and flaxseed, and you know those are things right, that right. anyone can buy. Yeah, anybody can buy that. But if it's a specific chemical okay. that I'm coming up with, then yeah. So you know that is always a you know the big danger because what happens is as you start to pick up, 
then you know big guys can just go and uh, copy it. Right? Oh yeah, they do, they do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So it's uh, great to know. And since uh, you said you have started in twenty uh, last year, you said. Uh, no, 2015. So 2015. this is my two years. So year. how is the uh, performance up, up to now in terms of success? Tell me something where you have, you know, some of your successes and some of your uh, maybe challenges that you have had. Well, the biggest success that I wasn't expecting was the amount of media that Blue Skin Care has gotten. If you go on our website and you go under the press section, just mm -hmm. within a year's period, we have like over 100 mentions from the Chicago Tribune, every type of blog, um, beauty magazine, women's fitness, you know, just every um, type of uh, media outlet that you can think of, Blue Skin Care has been included. Uh -huh. And the beauty about it is that they've taken our product, the beauty bloggers, and they've compared it to others like Kiehl, Clinique, all of these other high-end brands, and our product rank right up there with those brands, our Jojoba Eye Serum. So we're so proud, and um, I guess we weren't expecting that. Okay. So that's the, the, the big – because the key is that it works. You know, so how has, did it happen? So tell me, how did the press found out about your product? Just submitting, just submitting, um, going out, doing, because um, I'm a former news reporter, mm -hmm. so I have some connections. So what I was doing, sending out press releases, um, I was sending my product to beauty bloggers, people that had a huge following, mm -hmm. people that I knew were honorable and um, really would test it and give an honest crit um, critique. So that's where I started. I started sending product out to these to these guys and to get them to try it and to actually give a, a critique and actually write about them. Because what you want them to do is write and recommend. So that's what started happening. They were they were um, trying my product and you know writing about it and telling their followers. So that's how the ball got to rolling. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you know, uh, like you said, your um, experience as as a reporter uh, mm -hmm. helped. <laughs> I guess. Also. It helps a lot, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, and then so so how has has all these uh, press uh, has it resulted in increased sales also? Yes, that's the key because when you go and I notice even with my sec ratings because when you start off and you're no one knows who you are, you know. I would plug in blue skincare, and if I didn't pull in the full address, then it wouldn't come up at all you know, on the rankings, you know, under Yahoo or Google. So now you can just plug in blue, you can plug in um, organic skincare, and blue skincare will pop up, mm -hmm. you know, relatively, relatively quick. So I've noticed with the press, obviously, because it draws more traffic to my website. And plus, I have people now, bloggers, that are coming to me wanting to um, post stories and things of that nature on my website to bring their followers to me. So, yeah, the press definitely helps. It's like getting the word out, marketing, and then, you know, and then with that sales, because you don't want to just bring them in to just be, you know, to buy one time. Obviously, you want them to continue to be a customer. So um, when you, you know, when they come in, try it, then they tell their customer and, you know, word of mouth is amazing. Yeah, you know, okay. word of mouth is amazing. So, so you know, that's, that is fantastic. So just talking, so, so your company is profitable uh, right now, correct? We are making, we're, our, our sales are increasing, but the company in itself, no, we're still, we won't be profitable probably until next year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. So, you know, I just, just wanted to get the basic background. All uh -huh. right. So let's dive into your questions for me. Yay. I'm excited. So one of the things, my main question is inexpensive ways to market, um, you know, marketing ideas. I'm mm -hmm. trying all different types of stuff, obviously, to bring in more money for blue skincare. But I'm open to find out if you have any other ideas that you can help me with that's inexpensive that can bring business to blue. Sure. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. I can. So, so, you know, your products, so first thing uh, I always suggest to everyone is you already have a, a customer base. Uh -huh. Right. So, so what you want to do is uh, is tap into into your customer base and see if you can get some referrals from. Them. Okay. <clears throat> that is always uh, and you know. So, so first thing is is referrals. Second, I'm assuming that on your I have not checked it, but you are trying to sign them up on a subscription basis so that automatically you are shipping them uh, the product. Right. Because you want to have a base 
uh, customer, you know that every month you are going to have X dollars of sales. Right. And that should be increasing. So uh, my suggestion always is that you, since you have a customer base, this is a product that, of course, once they have used out, they need more of it. So right. if you can if you can sign them up or on some kind of subscription program, then you are just automatically charging their credit card and shipping them the product. Okay. The the second is is from the list of your customers and and since they are buying on the mostly on the internet, right? That's where you are selling. Right. Right. So so you should have their email addresses. Right. You can use those email address to to effectively target similar profiles uh, and Facebook really does a has a fantastic tool there where you you can really hone on to a very narrow segment of people who are exactly like the people uh, like your current customer base okay, okay. and uh, and tar- and then then target them uh, right now I my suggestion would be that digital marketing should be the you know the you know the key uh, marketing method that you should focus on. Obviously, what you're doing is wonderful. Getting press con- uh, presses uh, mentions, uh, all those things that you have done is great. Now, what you have to do is create is almost use all that information into an I, you know, in the, for the lack of other words, uh, an argument for your product. And when okay. I'm saying argument, it's almost like you are you are think of think of your customers uh, or the prospect as the as the jury and okay. and you are making an argument why they should be buying your product right so that ultimately right. they want uh, their judgment has to be yeah you know this product instead of the competitors and you already have a lot of information so you want to build the case why your product uh, and then you can use the social media, uh, sorry, social media and digital marketing, like Google AdWords, for example, is is another example, to direct exactly the kind of people that that you want. Okay. Now the the interesting thing, or the good thing also about uh, digital media, is you can do a very narrow uh, targeting, so you can you can test with a very small amount of money. Uh, okay. I am very big on. <clears throat> On testing, and I'm also very big on uh, if you if you fail, failing quickly and failing cheaply. <laughs> right. And and what happens in marketing, uh, because it is not a science, you will it will happen. You know there 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 will be times when everything will look logical, and you will say there's no way in the world that you know this is like a a winner, easy slam dunk, and it doesn't it it, it doesn't work. So, right. So that's why testing is very important, uh, and you can digital marketing lets you test it very cheaply. So what I was saying is, is that digital marketing helps you really first thing narrow target. So you want to to target your product to a, as narrow uh, a group as possible, and okay, and you decide who to target really, like I said, based on your, your customer base. Uh, it's I'm very big on building on your current customer. Okay. And, and rather than chasing, so first thing you want to get more sales from them. So hence, you're getting a, a, some some sort some kind of subscription program, offering them even a a reason to subscribe. Uh, convenience is obviously the the big factor that they automatically get it every one month, two month, three month, whatever. Whenever they uh, typically they exhaust, you know, they can choose right. when. Uh, and and then build upon that. So so there are a lot of analytics. Uh, Facebook uh, allows you to use a list of your customers, and uh, and then it will identify the people exactly like those in in uh, as in, in Facebook. And then okay. of course you can narrow your geography, your area, the number, and all those things. Budget, every, everything. So you so my my sense is really use digital marketing. So the first thing you want to do is get to a point where you know, okay, when I run this campaign and I spend hundred dollars, I get whatever you know, three hundred dollars in sales, five hundred in sales. A, right. A sales dollar that that you are profitable, and then you start to multiply it. So right. By, by making it very narrow in the so so say you know your digital target audience, right? Right. Then you say, okay, 
So with this target audience, all I'm going to focus is on in Los Angeles. Right. People like uh, this. Okay. That way you, you will not need a big budget and you will have a chance to tweak your message and all. And suppose you now you get to a point where you, you want $100 to generate say $300 in profit. You know, that is right. something that you want. Right. So once you have figured out that in Los Angeles, now you can spend $100, you can get uh, 300 Now you can move your budget to 200 and and open it up. Maybe open it to Southern California. Okay. And if that 200 still give, gives you uh, 600 then you open it further. So you open it all over California and, and bump your budget to 500 And you see... Okay. Uh, and so at some point, you will know that, okay, uh, whatever money I'm putting it, if I'm putting 1,000, I'm getting 3,000. If I'm uh, in profit, if I'm putting 10,000, I'm getting 30,000. So essentially what I call, uh, you want to reach a point where now you have a faucet that you can turn it on and you can get, you know, open it up and you can get more and more from it. Because obviously as your sales increases, you will have to figure out how you're going to do the fulfillment, right? You know, the right. packaging, shipping, and all those things multiply. So okay. this gives you, uh, you know, the option the really to work through the process so that you not only you, you have tested the sales, but you also know that, you know, there are operational issues and you can fix it. I mean, the last thing you want to do is, is invest $10,000, get $30,000, or whatever, 50,000 in order so that you have 30,000 in profit. Right. And then you fail. You are not able to fulfill, right? Right, so, right. So, so that's the, you know, when, since when you are starting a new business, when you're a small business, it is very important not just to make sure that the marketing is effective, but also that your operations uh, is, is working very well. And the, right. and, and the, the other thing that I will tell you is, these days, what people are talking about, your consumer, you see, it's one thing, yes, you know, influencer talking about it is great, but what your consumers are talking about your product on the internet is very important. Right. And, uh, and so there are many review uh, platforms, as you know, there's a Google, there is uh, Facebook, you have right. uh, Yelp, in, in the beauty industry, you may have some other very specific one. So... So get a program uh, so that you are encouraging your customers to to go and write reviews on those uh, platforms. And the way it works with reviews, unless you are asking people to do that, typically you will not get it. Okay, so so that will be my suggestion for marketing right now. The only thing, so when you said start off small, so since I'm in California, so start off Southern California, then open it up to... The exactly. full California. Okay. You see, what you want to do is make sure that, say, you are testing with a $500 budget. I'm just throwing a number. Right. You want to make sure that uh, that you are that $500 investment is giving you the return. Right. So your sales increase is such that now you are you are getting more than 500, right? Or right. Uh, and then then you can increase it to a thousand. At some point, when you start to increase the the dollar amount you will have to open it up to the bigger geography. So what, what this does is by limiting the geography, uh, and it's not just a geography. Like I said, you, you can limit who, you know, who is the profile of the customer with the Facebook. You have this great advantage of literally saying, I want you know, women of this age group, this right. ethnicity. I mean, you, know, you, you have a lot, this kind of education. Right. You, you, know, you can really narrow target it. And my suggestion to you is uh, use your current base to understand who your customers are. Right. right now. And then for when you're advertising to new customers, really make sure that narrow target to that group. You, uh, you know, it, it's a, it's a, you, if you look at Facebook, which is, of course, now it's like a massive corporation. <laughs> yeah. It started with just for people of students of Harvard. Right. And then they grew. When it, that started to work, they they expanded it to Ivy League uh, only. Right. Right. After that, they expanded it to students only. So you had to add .edu. Right. And, and when that was working, then suddenly they opened to everyone. So yeah, you know, it took them six, seven years before, I guess, or four or five years. I don't know the exact year before everyone could even use it. 
but right. they had it tested not just the success but all the challenges that comes with more people more sales that right. you have uh, and so so by the time they opened it to everyone they had the proper infrastructure to support it Okay. And the platform, should it be Facebook or Instagram? Which one should I t test market? You know, my thing is test on both. Okay. Use a, use a small, uh, smaller dollar amount because I, you see the, what platform, even the Google uh, paid advertising may work. So all you, all you care for is if I'm spending $100, do I get 300 or whatever is, the number right. is needed right. because you have the Food, you know the product cost and everything so you will know the profit margin and and then then you you try uh, some two three different uh, platforms and see which one gives you the the best return right and then start to expand on then then you say okay I'm just going to hold these other two platforms and and I'm just going to focus on this to expand it to a bigger and bigger and bigger area until you know until I'm, I'm very big on on the fact that you choose one platform once you select one until you have exhausted, you say, okay, okay I, I have maximized this platform. I would not bother with the second platform for a small okay. business. You know, right. the, the large corporations, sure, you know, they have millions of dollars in marketing budget. So they have, they have five teams. One is focused on Google, one on Instagram, one on Facebook, or whatever, right. right? But as a small business owner, you want to first test on two, three different uh, platforms. And whichever is wor starts to work, then you want to just totally focus on on that platform until you have maxed it and then you say okay, okay let me try let now i'm going to expand to the next one next one now does it matter if it's a video or should it be just a regular um um ad like a uh, uh, picture again i will try both you okay. know, video is should be much more effective in you for your product i'm saying should be okay right? but it can't hurt to to test it you see that's where you know, the first couple of months, what all you will be doing, you will be testing different testing. programs to see okay. which works, what what works, what doesn't work. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. That's it. You've answered that question. Okay. Good. <laughs> Gosh. Okay. The second question that I had were different contest ideas to make money for my business. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, from your current business right now, you're saying. Uh huh. Yeah, for my current business. So uh, I will I will tell you as a fellow entrepreneur, right? And also I've been a, been I've consulted for a very long time now for like twelve thirteen years. I've been consulting with small business owners. Okay. Uh, I always discourage entrepreneurs uh, to uh, to jump into a new product until you have really. Uh, maximize sales of your own product because okay because what, what it will do is if you start to to add additional product that will take the focus away from your base product you want to make this like a a, a solid success before right. you jump onto some something else and i can tell you that i made the mistake that i'm telling you not to make <laughs> okay uh, and as a result i think that i was set back by two three years now I wow. persisted and it worked for both uh, businesses, but I will tell you that uh, I was definitely, I, I have no doubt in my mind that I was set back by uh, two, three years uh, okay. because, of, because of that, and because of okay. the mistake I made was focused, so I, I had to start focusing on two businesses instead of one. Okay. Okay, so just concentrate. So for contest, if I want to run a contest to actually, let's say, give away a product or um, give a percentage off of a product, do you recommend that for oh, yeah, my that, for your kind of product? It is yes. definitely you know you can you can even do the contest and say uh, give you know you can say I'm I'm doing a marketing uh, campaign. So you okay. can use my product and tell me if it works. Of course, if it doesn't work, you ignore it. Right. I'm giving it to for free, but uh, if it works, all all you do is give me a video of testimonial. Right. Of what you liked about it, whoever we select is the best one. Say you you give them one year of free supply or right. anything like that, and uh, and and that those are the kind of things that work because see you ask them to post it on their Facebook and send it to you. Uh, right. So so you can use contests very cleverly to get some uh, viral marketing. Okay. 
Okay. Um, uh, think, oh, and my last question I had for you was, we're dealing with trade shows and business expo, um, mm-hmm. events. Is, do you think that that's a profitable thing for small businesses or a business like mine at this stage? Uh, you know, I think that, uh, at least one time, uh, again, it's a test for okay. uh, thing. So it cannot hurt because what it does, it tells you what kind of people are going there. Right. right. So, so you get some sense of your competition, and also uh, when people are coming in, you will see, you know, what what is their reaction. I am, I, you know, at this point when you go to trade show, obviously you're looking for the distributors, right? For right. The product. Right. And and you know, it may be a little bit early. Okay. Because, uh, and the reason I'm saying is that the distributors just because your product is sitting on the shelf somewhere. Right. It's right. not going to move. You know, you, right. you know that. Uh, so there has to be a name, there has to be promotion and everything. And unless there is a promotion, uh, it may lead to, you know, some someone says, I'm, I'm excited. I, I want to offer you a product. Right. But if they don't promote it in, in the, right. the retail level, then it will just sit there and it will, if anything, impact the, uh, your uh, your future right. sales with that channel. So be very careful. Um, again, going there can't hurt because you will at least see what kind of interest people have when they come to uh, to your booth and right. talk to you. Uh, and then I will really focus on asking them about whether how you're going to promote it. So you just say, listen, I don't have any big budget for marketing. Right. So how would you promote it? If they say, yeah, you can put a banner in my store, I don't mind. Right. Sure, then I will jump at it, right? Because you, 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 can, you can do that, you can put a banner on top uh, so that pe- it will grab people's attention. Most of the problem in the store is, 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 is exactly the same problem when you watch TV. When you have 50 products sitting there, you know, similar product, why would someone even look at your product? Right. Uh, see, so, that, so that is the challenge. Again, I, am, I, don't, I don't know the details of your industry, right? You know it better. So right. If you, th- if you feel like people are going there and looking for solution at the store level and they will try a new thing because it is there, uh, sure. So, but... You know, it cannot hurt to be on on the on the booth. There. Okay, okay, and I and with my booth because when you go to these trade shows, they have these big elaborate booths. Is it, is it okay if I just have a table and maybe a banner, or uh, do I? Okay, most of them. That's that's what you can afford anyway. So so that okay. is. Uh, but, but again, what it does, it 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 will give you a feel for what sort of interest people have in your product. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think that's everything. Wow, you've been so helpful. Okay, wonderful. And I hope that uh, some some of these things were helpful and, and you are able to use some of the um, these uh, uh, things that we discussed. Well, I'm going to do the digital marketing right off the bat. I'm going to sit down and go, um, I'm going to plug in uh, with Facebook, dealing with my client, my current clientele. And yeah. then just build because I know my I know the customer that I um what my ideal customer is so Perfect. I'll just but what I didn't know is to just concentrate on Southern California before I was just putting it out there for everybody. Yeah. But I, uh, and, the, and again, the reason I'm saying the Southern California is because you want to test with a small set of people, mm-hmm. so so that you you can change, uh, you can see what kind of result you are getting. Uh, very often, it is. It is very difficult to get things right in the very first time. So right. This is the reason why these very large corporations, even companies like Procter & Gamble, for example, right. every advertising, they test it in the small markets before it goes into every other place. And right. The reason they do it is if they are testing it in a tiny market like Peoria, Illinois, uh, what happens is that you know, they spend $20,000, $30,000, and they can gauge what kind of response they are getting from people for that. Right, right, right. right. Uh, and then based on that, they will launch a, a national campaign. I, I have been part of marketing 
in major corporation for a very big chunk of my life and many 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 campaigns where we would spend three four hundred thousand dollars to create the ad we will abandon that ad because in the test market it didn't do well oh, okay so, so that's sense. why i'm saying that you want to create your own test market right, right? first so you are saying okay these are the kind of people that i am i am going after and right then this is a small area because because that way what it does is you will have the total concentration right so so suppose you say okay my clientele is women 35 to 50 i'm just simplifying it right and and if you do national and you say my budget is 200 for the test okay it quickly goes to those people there right and so maybe 0.001% of the people saw your ad and you and if it didn't work you don't have a way to to redo your ad and test with the same group again right okay but, but if you have limited it to uh, say los angeles right and you say women whatever 35 to 54 then you know that you have reached a big chunk of this, uh, the those women right and right. if it did not work then you are testing with something new then you know that the same people are getting it so you will see if the response is better or not better so so that is that's the reason why testing is so important with a very small segment of uh, uh, people right okay yep okay. that's it okay thank you Thank you for listening to this episode of the Founders Corner Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to follow and rate us on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. If you're listening through one of these programs, visit our main page at www.gmrwebteam.com forward slash the Founders Corner.